in many, many situations, the, the, the children do not belong to the, to the parents. The, there are situations right now in America where the government agency can come in and take your child away from you. And that is the sad reality. Um, and actually, I, I don't have time to go into all the details, but there are situations even where the Division of Child Services has an economic benefit to take children out of the home. And they can take the child out of the home and then they, make, they get more money fr from the federal government. So it's actually a very dangerous situation. So So the, re the reality is that we have a gender-enforced, transgender, anti-Christian ideology already in many, many parts of the United States. And under this happened uh, <clears throat> under President Obama. On May 16, 2017, he issued orders through the Department of Education, and also the Department of uh, Health and Human Services imposing, th threatening schools that if you do not allow a, a, a boy who thinks he's a girl to go into the girls' locker room where girls are undressing and using the shower together with those girls, then we will cut off the federal funding to your school. That type, that type of uh, policy he required, his, his administration required. Now, when President Trump was elected and took office, he, he reversed. He reversed those policies. So we need to understand... This is really a battle, and then November 3rd, it's really a battle between a biblical view of human beings versus an anti-biblical view aligned with government power, okay? I mean, people are free to believe whatever they want. I, I don't care if some people want to believe something that makes no sense. Everyone has a right to be stupid, right? Okay, okay. But the problem is when you align anti biblical stupidity with government power, that's where you have a serious problem. Do you agree? That's why Christians have to stand up. And unfortunately, many, many times, Christians have actually been supporting um, leftist and even communist causes. The, um, I, I was reading through the Chaos Emanuel today, this morning, and there was a, a, a quote from Armando Valladares. He was a, a, a Christian dissident who was put into the uh, Cuban prison for, for uh, 10 years. And he, 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 he said, when the Christian uh, ministers came and visited Cuba, we thought that they would be help, you know, advocating on behalf of the Christians who are in the prison. But many, most of the time, the Christian ministers would be supporting the, the communist government of Cuba and doing nothing, nothing about helping the Christians who are actually in the prison. So Christianity has actually been infected and infiltrated in many, many parts of the world, actually. M many Christian ministers are more, have a leftist ideology. Actually, uh, the last lecture that I hope to get to tomorrow and, and Friday will be going into some of the ideas of systemic racism, which are very, very, you know, very uh, strong right now in in um, America. Okay. Yeah. So in their view, the children belong to the state, not to you. 
I mean, uh, of course, I, I, I do agree that if, uh, if the parents truly are abusing their children, there are some parents that are not good, okay. If the, ch if the parents are truly abusing their, their, their children, then the state may have to do something, but there should be due process. In many cases, the, 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 the government agency can just come in uh, say, oh, we, we, we got some type of complaint here. Um, and we're going to take your children away until we do an investigation. They do their own investigation. In some cases, they actually lie. There's, I don't, uh, there's a video I could show you, which I, I showed on the King's Report, where the, the, a lawyer in California uh, he investigated one family situation where the children were taken away from the parents. And according to the report from the, the Child Protective Services, uh, the children were uh, examined by a medical doctor. Uh, and they, so he called up the medical doctor and said, did, did you examine these children to see that they were abused? She said, no, I, I never met them. I never met them. So in this case, the government was, the, the government, they were lying. They were lying. And that's where, it, that's where it's, it's very da a very dangerous uh, situation. So now I want to get into very briefly the idea of You know, Karl, Karl Marx did not deny that there is, there is a, a truth in falsehood, right? He, he believed that his theories about, uh, you know, material, material, materialistic determinism and class hatred, uh, you know, dialectic materialism, historical materialism, he believed that his ideas were true, okay? <laughs> I mean, they were not based on any reality, right? But he, he believed that they were true, okay? But there's a, uh, a philosophical trend that started in the 1960s in America and Europe, which is actually saying there is no truth. It, it, there's, they're saying... There's no way to get to reliable knowledge or, or even a universal stable reality because everyone is biased. They, they would say, oh, you might just say that you, you have an objective view of, of reality, but actually it's really just benefiting you. You know, Ted O'Grady might say that he you know, he saw something and, you know, it's what he really saw, but he, he actually has another agenda that, that benefits him and people like him. You know, you know they, they question the motives of people and they say there is no truth. So there's no objective reality, morality, truth, human nature, or reason. There's no objective shared reality, just self-interested truth claims. Values are just preferences and, and power claims, yes, okay. So, and then there's another idea that came along in 1989. The, now, a legal theorist named Kimberly Crenshaw developed what is called critical race theory. And one of her main ideas was the idea of, it's called intersectionality. And the idea is that there are these interlo interlocking systems of power which impact those who are most victimized, marginalized, because of their class, race, sexual orientation, or gender. So it's very much focused on these victim groups. The, the, you know, it could be... Um, 
be persecuted or rejected because of their race, their maybe less education because they are transgender or homosexual or uh, gay, their abilities, their age, their gender, and so on. So it's really focusing on advocating for, for, for those people. And the more persecuted those people are, the more authority they have. They're viewed as having a, a more, we, we need to listen to them because they've been, they have suffered, I guess you could say. Now, I mean, I, I, I don't deny that we should listen to people, to their experiences, and that we should, if they've, people have suffered, I think we should listen to them, and we should be concerned about helping them. Actually, a Christian, a Christian believes that, right? Jesus Christ had compassion on people who were suffering, right? He, he defended the, the, women, the woman at the well, the, uh, well, they said there's several women, but the, actually the one that, uh, they were going to stone a woman to death. She had been caught in the act of adultery. All right, she had committed a, a terrible sin, right? He defended her. So Jesus had compassion on even people who did something wrong. He, he knew she, he did, she did something wrong, but he defended her. So I, I don't deny that we should, we should have compassion for people who... Uh, are rejected in society and so on. But the problem is, when you attach political power to certain categories and you change government policy, that's where I believe you get into a big problem. Because then you're actually using government policy to promote certain lifestyles, right? And to, to benefit people uh, who have a certain skin color, um, certain sexual activities, and so on. It, it, it's really a misuse. It's interesting because Christianity does have built into it a, a concern for people who are suffering, right? But this ideology kind of uses that Christian impulse to actually uh, create like a new tyranny. We'll, 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 we'll get into it, okay. So let's talk about racial division for the revolution. So there was a conference at the University of Puget Sound in Washington State in 2015 so I want to read from their uh, mission statement. Racism is an institutionalized, multi-layered, multi-level system that distributes unequal power and resources between white people and people of color as socially identified and disproportionately benefits whites. All white people benefit from racism regardless of their intentions. Uh, no one is neutral, so not to act against racism is to, is to support racism. It must be continually identified, analyzed, and challenged. No one is ever done. The question is not did racism take place, but how did racism manifest in that situation? You must always mention your race, gender, sexuality, and how it impacts on what you're saying. Resistance is a predictable reaction to anti-racist education. It must be explicitly and strategically addressed. So they are uh, really I guess you could say they're asserting 
Well, let me just give you an example. Let's just move on to the next example. Okay. So here is um, seminars that are gov actually these kind of anti-racism seminars, racial sensitivity training and so on, they have, are, have been given throughout the military, throughout the Department of State, uh, to uh, many intelligence agencies, I believe, many, many sectors of our federal government, many local governments, state governments, many businesses, many large corporations, they, they, they make their employees, they, they have someone come in. So here's an example of a woman named Ashley the Lion. the Lion, right, okay. And I think you see her main, uh, her main point here. <laughs> All white people are racist. Now, this is not, this is not uh, well, first of all, I don't believe it's American, but it's definitely not Christian, right? Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that everyone has, has sinned. Everyone has sinned, right? So if you say that all white people are racist, d does that mean that, that black people are never racist? Does it mean that, that Oriental people are never racist? Every, all of us have unloving attitudes that we have to challenge, right? And the other point, and I'll be talking about this uh, in the next lecture, um, there are many white people who actually have devote, devoted their entire life to, to fight racism, actually, and to fight slavery in the United States and actually through, and, uh, throughout the, the world, actually. So, I mean, this is really um, an ideology taking control of government policy to indoctrinate, to indoctrinate people on a wide, wide level. It's quite dangerous. So they're, and they initially come about with advoc advocating diversity. The idea of diversity is kind of an interesting idea because, you know, I think most of us would agree that having people of different experiences, backgrounds, ethnicities, it can be a good thing, right? It, it can be a good thing. But in reality, in practice in the United States, when th there's a policy of diversity, it usually, it usually means we're going to accept um, or promote um, different sexual lifestyles, like gay or homosexuality and uh, transgenderism and so on, and we're going to re reject or, or n uh, traditional Christian values. When, when they say diversity, it usually means we will accept everything but a biblical point of view, <laughs> basically. It basically means anti-Christian, all right? And, uh, um, and I, I have seen this actually in the area of sex education, where they, uh, the typical curriculum usually does not mention the word marriage. They will not talk about marriage in, in the, when they're talking about, um, you know, male-female relationships and, uh, you know, sexuality and so on. Many of these curricula, they, they will not mention marriage at all or, or monogamy. You know, monogamy being, means being faithful to one person for life. They will not talk about that. Now, there are some curricula which, are, which do talk about that, but many of them do not. All right, and then, uh, so they're talking about minorities. They talk about equality versus equity. So equality means 
equality of uh, freedom to... Um, in America, we have the idea that people should be able to um, not be discriminated against, right? So um, in terms of uh, employment, they should not be discriminated against because of their skin color or other, other personal, uh, their personal lifestyle should, should not be an issue, right? Uh, so I, I, you know, basically, I, I agree with that. Right, I, I don't believe in discriminating against people for those, uh, you know, those th uh, reasons. Uh, but equity means something different. Equity means equality of outcome. It means if there's a disparity in people's uh, wealth, if there's a disparity in terms of uh, people's success in life, then the government must correct it. The government must, must which basically means socialism. The, the government must distribute resources to, to uh, equalize the outcomes. And that, that essentially is socialism. Okay. Uh, so people of color are viewed as being usually victimized and therefore they have more authority. Um, safe space, they, 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 it gives a lot of uh, concern that people should be, should never feel uncomfortable. And if you're saying something that makes them feel uncomfortable, then, then you have to be quiet. Okay, that is the opposite of free speech. Right? The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees the right to um, freedom of speech and free freedom of association, freedom of religion. But if we have to protect everyone's safe space, it really means that anytime someone says they feel insulted, then you have to, be, you have to shut up, right? That's basically what they're saying. Uh, white privilege, again, this idea that you know all people, white people, are racist and privileged, and essentially it's an attack on capitalism. There, there is an attack on it. It's aligned with Marxism because because of. free enterprise does lead to inequality. All right, let, let's talk about this for a second. If we, if we have the right to own private property, some, some people may work very hard to create something, right? And they may take a risk to, to invest in a business, start a business, they work really hard, and they may become very successful. They may become a millionaire, right? Other people may just not be motivated, right? They may just want to, you know, smoke marijuana all day or, you know, just, just relax all day. They may not really be motivated to work hard. So free enterprise capitalism does re result in, in, in inequalities. But the good point is that it allows the creative energy of the, of, the, of, of the people to create wealth, and that benefits everybody, right? You know, the fact that uh, Steve Jobs became a multi-billionaire, I, I don't really mind that. I'm not jealous of him. I, I enjoy using, his, you know, the the Apple computers, the MacBook computers, I, 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 I benefit because I can, I can buy that and use it, right? We can use the products. You know, capitalism developed this. Okay. This was not created by a government agency. It was not developed by a communist bureaucracy. This was created by 
free market capitalism, and I think we're all benefiting from this. I mean, maybe we pay much too much attention to this. I don't know, but but we we we, we benefit from this, right? Are are you jealous because uh, you know some people became very wealthy and rich? Are you jealous of them? I, I don't think you should be. You can create things using this and using this, and you can become successful in the in your area. Okay. So now it, it is ironic that this woman is telling that most these people are mostly white in this workshop, and <clears throat> that they're all racist, but she's using PayPal. If they want to send her a donation, <laughs> they can send her a donation by PayPal. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yeah. PayPal is a private corporation that uh, was developed by capitalists. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right. They're basically teaching an anti-Christian ideology. Now, I want to show you an example of Disproport she says that all pe white people have white privilege, so I want to show you some, some people from Appalachia. I believe this is in West Virginia. This is during the Depression. They, they don't look too, too benefited to me. They it looks like they could use more benefit. <laughs> okay, so basically what we're dealing with is a creed... A system doctor, a former, it's like a formula of a religious belief or something similar. So when they say all white people benefit from racism regardless of their intentions, no one's neutral, so you have to act against racism or you're racist. They have absolute certainty about what's wrong with the world. It's a call to arms for any idealistic young person who wants a better world. They're initiating young, uh, college students on American campuses into an anti-racist cult. 